We want to go ahead, Carly, then? Yeah, it looks like we've had some more people join, so we can go ahead and start. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Um, as many of you know, we're here to discuss the proposed district Redwood Park tank project tonight. Um, the meeting will consist of a short presentation to go through the project components, the project purpose, and then some common questions and concerns that we've received. Um, I'll go ahead and start out by introducing who we have today on the call with us. For district staff, we have Rick Rogers, our district manager, James Furtado, our director of operations. And then we also have Jennifer Pado and Amanda Antonelli from Rencon Consultants who completed the initial study mitigated negative declaration for this project. And then finally, myself, Carly Blanchard, the environmental planner for the district. So I'd like to ask as well that um, we hold all of the public questions until the end of the presentation. Um, if any of the slides are relevant to your question, we're more than happy to go back to that as well. And then while we're on this initial slide, I'd like to point out this is a rendering of the proposed tank, the pump house, and the fence that would contain the site. Um, all of this information that's going to be covered in tonight's presentation, along with these photos and any of the other um, maps are included in the initial study mitigated negative declaration and the fact answers and questions document the district completed and that's all on the website. So we'll go ahead and start out with talking about the operational aspects um, of the zones served by the, the current tanks and then the proposed tank. So I'll let Rick and James take this portion of the presentation. So next. Uh, thank you, uh, Carly. My name is Rick Rogers. I'm the district manager for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Um, we thought we'd start with just a, a short overview uh, of the operations uh, uh, for the area. Uh, the Redwood Park tank zone uh, feeds uh, approximately 258 water service connections, either directly from the reservoir or through pass through from water through this reservoir. Uh, we pump water from Highway 9 from a lower zone uh, in the Brookdale area actually is where the main storage is. And we pump this water uh, along, there's a, a concrete pump station right there along uh, Highway 9 and Scenic Drive. And we pump water up to right now is the two existing Redwood tanks. The water is then uh, stored in those two Redwood tanks it feeds the lower portion of the zone. Uh, and then uh, there's a pump located at that tank that pumps water all the way up to the top of, I guess it's Country Club Drive uh, to the spring tank and then gravity back and feeds the upper area. And it's about, again, a total of 258 uh, connections. Uh, the water is kept in the, the general neighborhood of a scenic drive, park drive, country club, uh, in, in that direct neighborhood. Uh, it's 100% residential. Uh, there is no commercial. Uh, and it also provides domestic and fire flow for that zone. Uh, with that, we can go back uh, to Carly. Great. We can go to the next slide. So the purpose of the Redwood Park tank project is to replace the two undersized 20,000 gallon Redwood tanks that have reached life expectancy and are leaking. Um, the total uh, storage for that zone currently is the 40,000 gallons, um, which is undersized for the County of Santa Cruz and the Ben Lomond Fire District's fire flow requirements. The next component of the project would be to replace the leaking and undersized 400 linear feet of pipeline currently serving homes on Country Club Drive. Uh, right now, the pipeline there is two inches and the county and the Ben Lomond Fire District requires a minimum of, of six inch pipeline. Um, the district, we'll talk about this a little later in the presentation as well, but the district's proposing to replace the two inch pipeline with eight inch pipeline exceeding the fire flow requirements for the county and Ben Lomond Fire. We can go on the next slide. 
right? So the project would consist of the following. It would be an 125,000 gallon bolted steel water storage tank, which is about 30 feet in diameter and 20 feet in height. Two water pumps housed in a 80 square foot pump station made from concrete and fire resistant roofing. A base rock surfaced or paved driveway into the tank site. And then 400, the 400 linear feet of pipeline replaced with the eight inch ductile steel water pipeline connecting the project site to the original swim tank site on Country Club Drive. And finally, a standby backup generator and propane tank for emergency power. Next. Okay, the proposed project is to be located on an approximately 6,500 square foot parcel located northwest of the intersection of Country Club Drive and Dundee Avenue in Ben Lomond, California. This APN is also available on the district's website in the initial study mitigated negative declaration document, um, if anyone needs to look into that. Uh, here we have a photo taken below the text um, from Country Club Drive outside the southwest corner of the proposed water tank site facing northwest. Next. So now we'll move on to some of the common questions and concerns we received during the public review period and from the neighborhood. Um, again, we have another rendering inside the fence of the proposed tank and the pump house. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So why is the original tank site of the water storage tanks not being used for the new tank? And why is the new tank site being chosen? The proposed project was chosen by the district for the following reasons. Location. The site is located near existing tie-in infrastructure and is large enough to accommodate the needed 125,000 gallon water tank. Cost efficiency. The site offers a much more cost efficient solution compared to alternative sites in the area while meeting standard fire flow tank size requirements. The tank site is also located at the correct elevation situated at the correct elevation for water delivery throughout the neighborhood. It's a relatively flat slope without grading. The slope of the site is relatively flat and the geotechnical investigation determined it would be feasible to construct the proposed project without grading. And finally, less environmentally impactful, um, fewer trees would be, need to be removed to accommodate infrastructure. So as compared to other potential sites in the area, including the original tank site, the proposed site would require fewer trees to be removed to accommodate the proposed infrastructure. Right now, there's a proposed of removal of five trees, one small suppressed coastal redwood, and four tan bark oak trees. Next slide, please. Great. So what hours will construction occur and will the project begin or when will the project begin and how long will it take to complete? Construction would occur during the working hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, excluding holidays. Construction is estimated to commence in spring 2021 and last for 12 months. Next slide. How will residents access their home? Will roads be closed or blocked by parked construction or associated vehicles? Next. Okay. No roadblocks are proposed during the construction of the water tank. Temporary, temporary traffic delays are proposed during pipeline constructions, which would take approximately two weeks to complete. Road access would still be passable for the entire two week duration of construction. If residents have a special request for time access, for example, a scheduled time they need to leave or return to their home, scheduled construction at their home, or et cetera, they can contact the district to accommodate these needs. The district standard contractor specifications include provisions requiring the roadway not to be blocked by park construction personnel vehicles. Next slide. How does the district accommodate emergency postal garbage and recycling services during construction? Service providers, including emergency personnel, postal service, garbage, and recycling would be contacted before roadway construction begins. The district will ensure scheduled services around daily roadway opening and establish communication protocols 
for accommodating unscheduled access needs. In an emergency access or evacuation scenario, steel plates placed along active trenches would quickly be used to restore vehicle access in the roadway. Next. Contractors will be responsible for basic traffic control measures to ensure the safety of vehicle traffic and material delivery, including providing flag persons at affected roadway segments and or intersections and traffic control signage. Next slide. How much noise will the new pump station contribute to the neighborhood? Will I be able to hear the pumps from my home? The proposed water pumps would be operational for up to three hours per day. The pumps would not operate continuously during nighttime or daytime hours. Existing water pump stations at other locations, pump stations with one or two water pumps generate noise levels between approximately 55 dBA at a distance of five feet. At the tank site property line, Noise levels associated with the operation of the new pump station were conservatively modeled to be approximately 43 dBA. It is also important to note dBA was modeled without the consideration of the concrete pump house structure, which would further decrease noise. These modeled dBA levels would not exceed the county's threshold of 75 dBA. Next slide. On this slide, we have a decibel level comparison chart put together by Yale University. As you can see, the 55 dBA is comparable to a household refrigerator. Um, and from the property line, the DBA, the DBA is reduced to 43, which is close to a suburban area at night um, noise. And again, please note that these pumps would run less than three hours a day and would be housed inside a concrete pump house structure. Next slide. Where will project staging occur? Will staging affect traffic in the neighborhood? Construction staging of smaller equipment and materials would occur primarily within the boundaries of the project site. Larger equipment, as in the water tank materials, may be temporarily staged at the large flat previously graded turnout off State Route 9 or Highway 9 across Highlands County Park. Construction staging would not involve ground disturbance. In addition, temporarily staged equipment would not occupy the entire turnout area. No lane closures of Highway 9 would be required. Staging would not affect parking or traffic within the neighborhood. Next slide. Why is the tank proposed to be 125,000 gallons? The Ben Lomond Fire District in the County of Santa Cruz assessed fire flow needs for the neighborhood and determined a 125,000 gallon water tank was needed. The tank size is considered to be the standard tank size for fire flow requirements in the county. The county fire flow requirements are based on fire occurring at a single residence and do not account for wildland fires. However, the improvement of tank capacity storage to the standard 125,000 gallons from the 40,000 gallons currently at the original tank site for the neighborhood would significantly improve fire protection to all homes. Increased tank size allows for more water security and decreases the chance of the tank emptying during emergency events. The automatic pump to fill the tank is also set to begin pumping when the water level drops to a certain height. This adds additional water security and will help maintain water levels in case of an emergency. You can go to the next slide. So that includes our short presentation. Uh, we will now go out to the public for questions, comments, and concerns. Uh, we will be giving each member about three minutes to ask their question or give us their concerns. Um, we'll ask that you use the raise hand function in the meeting, in the Zoom meeting platform. Um, and from there, we'll call on your name and then unmute you and we'll have one of our staff answer the question. And, and so if I can uh, jump in here real quick, Carly. And two, if, if you would direct uh, the questions to district staff, We'd appreciate it if we didn't have crosstalk with the participants um, and, and direct all of your uh, questions to staff. Thank you. Great. So it looks like the first that I see in my chat is Peter Parker. So we can go ahead and unmute Peter.
Can you hear us, Peter? There we go. We can hear you, go ahead. Peter, can you hear us? We're not hearing uh, Peter. Do we want to go to our next? Uh... Sure, we've come back to Peter. Um, let's go ahead and I see Julie Carlson is the next on my list. Hi, it's my neighbor. Chuck has a question. We're watching together. Sure. Um, question was, I noticed from the diagram that Dundee Avenue is alongside the tank area and you're showing parking right off Dundee or is that just in your line? Like, where are you planning on putting the parking for your site? Richard James? Uh, you... completed the completed tank project for like parking or district staff uh, servicing the tank or pump station will be on the property. Yes, that's the line of Dundee Avenue. I believe so. Yeah, the so, driveway comes in off a of country club and goes along yeah. Dundee Avenue. Right. Okay, but Dundee Avenue is not, not access to your property. Sorry, you were talking while I was talking. I didn't hear that. Dundee Avenue does not have access to your property, then it's completely cut off. That area is proposed to be fenced off, yes. Okay. And I noticed on the rendition of the tank, they showed a nice redwood uh, fence around the thing. Is there a redwood fence going up or is it a chain link fence? There will be a redwood fence. Oh, nice. Okay. It, it, may be, it may be a combination of redwood and chain link on the back section. But the front section that you can see will definitely be redwood. Okay. With the removal of the trees, when you come in from Country Club driving down Dundee Avenue, are they going to strip the trees out along Dundee there? So you see, basically, when you come around the corner, you'll see this huge tank? No. And we there's a few in the middle of the site that are coming out. And then the one small redwood is actually on the edge of the redwood grove above. Oh, and then yeah. we will be planting trees along that fence line along Dundee as well, along with bushes and things that have been proposed to be planted there. Okay. So with your property line, I uh, guess what I'm trying to get at, well, there's no parking off Dundee Avenue then for your property, right? Not That is not a planned access for the district to access that property, no. Okay. Also, one last thing, the pump house, where is that located on the front towards Country Club or back by the tank area? The pump station is right off the side of the tank between the tank and Dundee Avenue. And it is being placed with this, the county setbacks from Dundee Avenue. And what are the county setbacks? I do believe they're 20 feet. Okay. I just feel everything is going to be really cramped on that property, especially with Peter Parker's property being in an angle in the back there. But you've answered basically my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Okay, so I, I see um, Peter Parker's back up there, but we I don't know if we want to try him one more time and then move on to the next That'd be fun. question. Peter, can you hear us? Hmm. For some reason. Yeah, we still can't hear you, Peter, if you're if you're talking. Hmm. <laughs> Peter, it might be better if you could also call in on a phone line and maybe you could communicate with us over the phone line better. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go on to Mark Randall's in the meantime. Um, so I had a question about emergency access. Um, it makes sense that you would replace the steel plates to allow for emergency vehicle access. Um, the only question I had is how long is that expected to take? Um, because over the entire length of the trench, I would expect it to be a pretty slow process. 
but um, if only part of the trench was uncovered at a time, that could be relatively quick, quickly done. Yeah, so as the construction, as they're trenching on the roadway, the typical way we go about this is usually there's only one or two plates off the trench at a time. And so that we're only open in the area that work's actually being done. Everything else will already have been plated. And so normally it'll be, like I said, a one to two plate section that would be open. So, I mean, you're, we're talking like five minutes or less to be prepared to have emergency vehicles come through. Okay, that makes sense. And they, they slide those plates right off of the trench line. So they're in place uh, in the uh, event of emergency is all they have to do is slide those plates back over the trench. Uh, yeah, I understand that. It's just the plates themselves weigh 250 pounds to 500 pounds. Um, so that, you need heavy thousand equipment. Pounds. Thousand yeah. Pounds, yeah. Um, they're pretty heavy and you have to use heavy equipment to move them. So yeah. that was the only concern there. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mark. Okay, we can, um, it looks like David Lohr is next. You're muted right now, David. There yeah, you I, I just unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Well, I, I'm just concerned about two things. You guys have covered a lot of stuff, and I really applaud your efforts to give us the castor oil we need when we're sick because... I run a water company up in the Sierras and I know how difficult it is to give people what they need, even though they don't want it. Um, there are a lot of concerns, but I won't uh, go any further than I, my, I'm a little concerned about what the garbage corral is going to look like because right now it's even overflowing how it is. And it, is it going to shrink or grow or be dealt with it in any fashion is question number one. And question number two, since I live right, right next to the old tanks, what happens to them when the new tank's in service? Rick, do you want to take that? Sure. Well, you know, we don't believe that we okay, will hear you. Your, uh, you know, your ongoing garbage collection. We know that, that the end of the street there is pretty much where all of the cans are put. We believe that there will be plenty of room for the for the garbage, and even if the garbage cans encroach in, in front of the district driveway, that's not a big deal. Um, you know, we get out and move garbage cans all the time. Um, when we get done with the project, the old tanks will be removed, and most likely uh, that parcel will be surplused. We haven't quite got that far down the road, but definitely the old tanks will be removed and we try not to maintain property you know, that we don't need. So most likely that parcel will be surplus. If I could add to that too, David, on the whole corral of the garbage cans up there, we really don't propose any work in that area at all. We won't be dismantling that thing. We won't be touching it. We won't put putting a new one back in there. It's planned to keep that area status quo yeah. as we don't believe that it's on the property to begin with. It's in the right of way. That's and correct. It's in the right of way. And so we will, we don't propose any work in that area. Um, okay. I'm not muted. Um, that's, that's a good answer. There is a fire hydrant right there. And I'm curious about how that ties into the new tank. So that'll be the tie-in for our pump station that'll be pumping out of the new tank, that pump station that's sitting next to there will pump the water from that tank. And that'll be the tie-in point to get into the upper system to pump up to the spring tank that is up higher in the system. Thank you. And thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you, David. All right, looks like we have Mike Alperin next. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I, uh, some of my questions have been answered by your presentation, uh, but I, I still have one point that I wanted to try to cover, and, and that is the uh, traffic control people. I, I feel that they should have radios and that there should be someone stationed at the bottom of Scenic uh, near the highway, and there should be a sign there stating that the road uh, will be uh, there will be delays and so if let's say an, an ambulance were to come up the hill 
the person down there could radio up and have the road starting to be cleared, uh, you know, uh, much more quickly. And also uh, another person placed at where Sylvia comes into uh, Scenic is where the beginning of the one lane road is. So if there was someone stationed there, they could keep people from driving up the one lane road uh, until the, the, uh, the construction equipment was cleared. But having, having that, that radio control and also having a cell phone in the possession of one of those uh, traffic control people with a phone number that we could call, uh, I guess maybe it, it's similar to what the calling the district would be and having them transfer a message, but still it would be seemingly more expedient to have uh, a, a number that we could call uh, and, and let them know that we needed to come through. Uh, but also, you know, uh, you, you, your information says that you intend to open the road for 10 or 15 minutes every hour or 45 minutes or whatever. It seems to me that uh, if the traffic was uh, very backed up or perhaps non-existent, the times of opening the road could be uh, regulated in order to uh, accommodate either no traffic or, or an ex excessive traffic, uh, just making it sitting sitting down below at uh, wherever Sylvia or wherever for an hour waiting for the road to open uh, would be very trying. And it would also uh, be impossible for people like uh, FedEx and, and UPS to, uh, as soon as they saw that, they would turn around and not deliver our packages. And so uh, some kind of, I think, uh, better uh, control um, more finely tuned control would be uh, uh, very beneficial. And, you know, uh, we want to know that the uh, contractor would be amenable to uh, keeping, keeping things flowing rather than just trying to uh, meet a, his schedule. And so we would like to uh, know about uh, how that might be handled. Uh, I, I have sent in messages concerning the, the pump and I really don't understand exactly what's going on. Is, is there a pump down at the swim tanks already? Yes, there is. Okay, well that answers part of, the, part of my question. So the pump that's being installed at the new location would, uh, what, what is the purpose of that? Why, would, why is that necessary uh, if the pump down at the swim tanks is already pumping water up there. We need we need to have that pump at the tanks for the for the, to supply a wet well for the pump to pump out of to pump into the upper zone. So that's why the pump is located adjacent to one of those redwood tanks. So once we remove those tanks, we're going to remove that wet well, and we don't pump right out of the main line because that'll pull. Uh, pull water away from, from customers has a potential. So we'll move that pump right up next to the new swim tank uh, for, for the wet well. And the contractor will be required as part of the project and the bid to submit a traffic control plan for the district to review and for Ben Loman Fire uh, to review. Uh, the Director of Operations has taken Ben Loman Fire Chief uh, Stacy Bromley out to the site, drove the area, discussed traffic control. Um, and, and we feel that we can put together an acceptable traffic plan with the contractor to follow. Uh, you know, we don't limit the contractor. A lot of times we ask the contractor to tell us how they're going to make this traffic control plan work, how they're going to keep the road open, uh, how they're going to address emergency traffic. And yes, I, I, uh, I would assume that radios and traffic control will be needed. Uh, I was part of the project on building the upper tank at the end of Country Club all the way to the top. And we took the tank up in the back of pickup truck, basically. And that's why this tank uh, has been selected 
because it's in panels. And so it takes a, a small vehicle, so you're not trying to get some oversized vehicle, an 18-wheeler, uh, you know, something uh, that doesn't belong up there uh, to try to get up that hill. You know, the biggest type of equipment that we'll see going up and down that, that will be a concern for traffic control will be, uh, you know, a concrete truck, uh, a, a smaller model dump truck, you know, very similar to the type of equipment that goes up and down that road now on, you know, remodeling uh, homes in the neighborhood at the size of a garbage truck. Um, this project doesn't take large equipment to construct. And again, hopefully we're only in the roadway on the pipeline approximately two weeks. So it's not like, you know, the project we, we give like close to a year to, to complete. A lot of that work is off the roadway, or most of this work is off the roadway on the actual parcel on, on constructing the tank, the, the concrete ring wall footing, and then bringing uh, the tank up in the back of, of a small small vehicles and, and erecting the tank and you know constructing the pump station, which that'll all be done. The majority of that will be done from the property itself. Um, we've done many of these projects on one-way roads in and out. We did the main line above this tank up Country Club, which you know those roads going up all the way to the top. Uh, there is some dual access, but a lot of it was one-way access as well. And we worked, uh, we worked and, and got folks through. Um, you, we will have a, a, a good traffic plan and we will require the contractor to, to stick to that plan uh, to make sure that we get the services. We'll, we won't work on the morning of the garbage pickup. You know, we'll make sure that the, the roadways open. We work with garbage companies. We'll work with FedEx, we'll work with UPS, uh, and so forth. Um, you know, there will be, you know, some delays here and there as roads are being opened and as we're, we're moving traffic through, but they'll be, they'll be minimal. They'll be minimal during the two week process. Thank you. I, I, um, am still a little bit concerned about people like UPS and, and FedEx being able to get through in a timely manner so that they, don't have to uh, give up on us. I but agree. I uh, also mentioned another site that is up on Caledonia where there's a small cabin there. And, I, and I'm and i not saying to give up on this tank, but I'm saying that possibly in the future, I'm wondering if that site had any possibilities for perhaps another tank. During this process in, in preparation for this meeting, there's been a, a couple people that uh, suggested other sites. When we looked at uh, a couple APNs higher up, one of the one of the uh, attributes that was involved in the selection of this parcel is the elevation. You know, your water pressure is set by elevation. As you move the tank up and down the hill in elevation, your water pressure uh, changes. The higher we go in that area, the higher the pressure down lower will be and it will cause problems. We, we won't be able to meet those pressures and pump up. You know, we'll have extremely high pressures in, in the water system that cause other problems. We're fortunate to have this site with little environmental disruption at the proper elevation. It's, all, it's almost too good to be true that it's gonna match almost the same height as the existing tanks now. And that's real important in design of a water system. We uh, have a tank up there already, the 100,000 gallon tank. And this, the site that I was looking at uh, is actually below that by some feet. So I, I don't know that it would uh, cause any kind of great increase in the pressure, but uh, I don't know. I guess you have your reasons for, for not wanting to use that parcel. Well, the cause, the problem with that is, is that's another zone. That's the zone that we'll be pumping out of this new tank too. And moving that tank down the hill will not allow us to supply pressure to the higher people in that neighborhood. So if we move the tank down, it lowers the pressure in the system. And there's high reaches going up into the neighborhood above Jackson and up in there that would not get water at that point. 
Well, as far as I know, this tank area uh, location that I've suggested is above all the houses by, by some feet. But the where you start to pump the water from the bottom of the hill coming up down at Scenic Drive, we would have pressures that our pipelines wouldn't be able to handle from down at Highway 9. You know, it's, it, there's there's a, a pressure break halfway up the hill at those redwood tanks. And then the you know, pressure goes back down to zero, and then we start climbing the hill again. Otherwise, we'd see the pressure from the very, very top of Country Club all the way down to Highway 9, and our main lines, our existing main lines, would not be able to handle those pressures. Okay, well, I, I, I'm not sure I got my question answered, but I'm just wondering why the upper tank, the 100,000 gallon tank, being very close in high, in elevation to the uh, site that I've suggested, uh, why there would be a, such a problem? The problem is, is 20 PSI in pressure drop. And there's people up Country Club that if they lost 20 PSI to their meter, they wouldn't have water at their house. Okay, well, if it's that much, then I, then I guess I can't... Uh, complain. <laughs> so, uh, okay, well, I guess, I guess that's uh, about as much as we're going to get going here with, with what I have mentioned. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll go on to Sandy Mass. Sandy, you're you're ready to go. You're mute. There you go. Okay. I just had a couple of questions. So my house is right by the tanks you're about to abandon. And I love those tanks, even though they leak like a sieve. Um, and I appreciate all your efforts to try to save them over the years. I'm the one that calls the San Lorenzo Valley emergency water person and say, they're really leaking bad now. But I am grateful that you are coming up with a solution. So I want to say that first. I'm grateful for you guys. I have a couple of questions. So I recently bought the two lots next to the old water tanks. So this is a selfish question. Um, I want to know what you're going to do with the old water tanks because I want them. Because I love them. And so... That's a side question, and you guys can talk to me later about that. Also, I had a thing about the road. So my late husband used to be the guy that repaired the road every time we had an infrastructure leak, which we know our infrastructure, let's all be honest, has challenges. And so my late husband was the guy that would always go out with the road patch and, and help the water guys and help everybody fix their road. So in this new construction thing, what I'd like you guys to throw in for our inconvenience is to repave our roads. I think you should do that because I think I paid $476 last month for my water bill because I have a lot of organic stuff growing and different things. And I check my water pipes all the time. So my point is this, why don't you, for our inconvenience, throw down repaving our roads? I'm a negotiator. I work for the Santa Cruz County Office of Education. I'm, I was former director of alternative education, and I'm here to negotiate a deal. So my thought for you guys is, so due to our inconvenience, you should repave our roads and I would be thrilled and support the project. I already do, but I would like you to do that for all your consumers who really care about our community. And we have roads from all the ruptures every however many feet where, where the junctures happen. And I've lived here for 35 freaking years. So I want to say I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I think you should throw in a whole road repavement program for Dundee, Jackson, and Country Club. That's all I'm saying, because I'm, I'm working a deal here. <laughs> That's it. I, I love you guys. And you guys, whenever I call, are so awesome. I'm just saying, 
I think you should do that for the community for the inconvenience, even though you're really doing the right thing by providing better fire safe and all the other stuff. But I think you'll get great traction with the community if you say, and by the way, we're gonna repave your roads and throw $3 on our bill. I don't care, just, I'm just telling you, I ran 24 school programs and I think I know what I'm talking about. So there it is. I'm excited and also I'm interested in buying your water tanks and your property when you're all done with the show. Amen, hallelujah, done. <laughs> well, Sandy, just real quick, uh, on the road where we are going to do, in the area we are trenching and putting, installing the new main line, uh, we are uh, planning an overlay of those roads. No, no, but make make us happy, Rick. Make us happy. You know, Jim Raposa and I, you know, we go way back. I go back way in the time machine. So make us happy. Just pave all the roads around there, and you will be the rock star of the community. Uh, we will. After. We, I mean, after. I'm talking we after, obviously. We will pave the areas that we do construction in. We will do a complete overlay of those areas where we trench to put pipeline. But well, we, how about the, wait, 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 back the truck up. Back the truck, back the truck up, buddy. We won't go any further. Back the truck up. Think about how many times somebody's had to come out there with road patch because the infrastructure had a challenge. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not dissing anybody. I'm just saying, how about for the first time in the world, take care of this other little small community. And I know you guys do a lot of good work. I have no issue with that. I'm the partner of the director of the water company who talked to you earlier in the Sierras. I'm just saying, wouldn't you be in the popular group, which maybe you care about or not, but you say, hey, you know, because of the inconvenience, we're gonna make sure because we've busted lines all over, in fact, we've had a bus right by my house that's on a plastic pipe, you know, one of those patches that we've been doing for years. And I'm just thinking if you guys fix the roads, you're going to be heroes in this community. And maybe that's not important to you, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. Thank you. God bless you. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> All right, we'll go over to Matt Johnston. There we are. Uh, hello, folks. Um, you answered some of my questions. Uh, I want to just continue a little bit on what Sandy was saying. If you take a um, walk about 100 feet up Country Club past Peter Parker's house, uh, there's a spot that's been leaking for maybe a couple years. Um, pipe is within a foot or so of the road the outside edge of the road all along where the pipeline runs now is slumping. Um, so there definitely are impacts to the leaky infrastructure on the roads outside of that area. And I'm not expecting that you, as Sandy requests, it would be great if you could pave the whole loop, but at least in the areas where you find a leak and that leak may be contributing to the failure of the road. And as you go along, I mean, I've lived here for 14 years now, 13 years now, and I've watched that section of the road just slump. Now it's about a foot and a half to two feet lower than where the road was when I got here. Um, so actively moving water seeping in from the pipeline. Um, so please take a look at that and consider if you have to fix the pipeline, it would be great to get the pipeline two feet down rather than at the surface where it keeps breaking. Um, and then of course, once you fix the pipeline, pave it. Um, you had mentioned earlier that the, the, the in terms of the fencing around the tank, uh, it would be a chain link in the back. Tank is round. What's the back? Is the back Peter Parker's house? So he has just a uh, chain link fence looking at the tank, or is it the, the three sides of street that are all facing everyone who walks the neighborhood? Um, I don't understand what the back of the tank is in terms of doing chain link versus redwood. It'd be nice just to do a redwood fence all the way around it. Um, I'm just, I'm good. You can answer me. I'm going to put these points out there. Um, a question on the driveway going into the intersection. Uh, how many parking places will that take out? Uh, and will you provide 
parking places, maybe along Dundee or somewhere else to make up for them, unless you want us parking in front of your gate, which I assume you don't. There's a question that I can throw out and wait for an answer. Any answers? Greg, you want to take that? Yeah. Uh, so right now, there's an area between the parking spaces in Dundee that's Berry Bush Patch. And the majority of the entrance of the site is going to take out that patch of berries. And then we will probably end up, the driveway will probably end up about one car parking spot there on the end of the parking area. Um, the district does not plan to put any parking in uh, at this time. Um, and once we get into the site and start laying things out a little bit more, that'll determine what more of what else can be done on that. Okay, there is a grade change right there with the uh, underneath that berry patch. So most of that berry patch is a slope. Um, so at least one parking place will go. Uh, maybe, maybe more. You're not sure, and no plans to replace them. Not this time. Okay. Um, during construction, how big of a crew do you guys have doing the work, and where will they park while they're working? can't really answer that right now matt until the, the contractor selected to find out you know what their workforce is i mean i, I you know i can i can say typically they're not large crews however I, I can't speak for that until we actually select a contractor and then uh we sit down and talk about you know the traffic control plan and you know the construction plan and and, and we realize that it's tight ingress and egress on the site, pretty typical. It, and it's more than just the egress and ingress, it's it's where people park sure. if they have guests over, where people park if they're you know going to visit somebody. Ha, doesn't really happen yeah. these days, but, um, but the, right the, the lack, complete lack of, of extra parking in the neighborhood um, to be taken up for a year by, by construction workers, there should be a plan for that. We, we Rest that plan with the contractor. And Matt, I will say I'm in doing all these long Pico tanks right now. Yeah. And every one of these sites is very tight. Up. And the crews that are working on those, the maximum crew that I've seen on site is four people at that out those sites. And those are two tanks, two tanks per site with grading and everything else. And they're in there on those sites, they have to park on site. There's nowhere else to park. So I would imagine that this is the same thing. And there's enough room there to where they could park, once they get their grubbing and grading done, mm -hmm. that the, there's no problem with them being able to make an area where they could park their vehicles out of everybody's way on site in order to keep the area clean. Okay, we'd like to see that be a requirement. That would be great. Um, rather than just, we'll figure it out later. I think, I think that um, for the first couple of days, it's going to be an issue though due to having to get in there and grade and grub. But right. once it's graded and grub, they're gonna have area to stage, park, work in. And you know, that, that will be in the uh, in the RFP, the request for proposal on the bid on the project. And we will uh, discuss the, you know, the, the lack of access for the site. And, and as part of the bidders, uh, the contractor's bidders walkthrough, you know, that will be discussed. Um, okay. and, and we know, I mean, you know, they're going to have to have a staging yard and the majority of all their staging and vehicles are going to have to be most likely down uh, if they can get, you know, they've got to get approval from Caltrans. Most likely uh, it'll be down in, uh, in across from Highlands Park in the big turnout that a lot of different construction folks use for staging. And then they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to carpool to go up top and 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 choose their, uh, you know, their vehicles, because there just is no room up there, and we realize that. And that'll be discussed during the bidding process. That'll be highlighted during the bidding process. Okay. And mandatory. Well, it'll be a mandatory site visit as well. You know, some some bids don't require, but this project will require a mandatory site visit because of the. Uh, the spatial spatial concerns. Okay, um, so the last little bit is regarding the uh, the 
the traffic control. Um, you know, I noticed in this presentation, you didn't talk about the um, open for 45 minutes and then close for 10. Um, is that still part of the, the plan? Um, yes. And uh, as I pointed out before, it seems like that is a new mitigation under CEQA. Uh, are you guys planning on recirculating or no? Um, I'm not quite sure. Amanda or Jennifer can answer. Yeah. So this is Amanda Antonelli, and I'm with RINCON and um, wrote the initial study mitigated negative declaration, so I can hop in on that. So I'm I'm actually looking here at the CEQA guidelines uh, defining when recirculation of a negative declaration is required prior to adoption. And it's really when a substantial revision is made, meaning a new avoidable significant effect is identified and mitigation measures or project revisions must be added in order to reduce the effect to insignificance. Um, or the lead agency determines that the proposed mitigation measures will not reduce potential effects to less than significance and new measures or revisions must be required. So in this case, we're seeing the clarifications to the ISMND um, to be providing clarifying or amplifying language and information to just clarify, you know, what the district is planning to do to manage traffic controls. It's not identifying a new significant impact. Um, it's just clarifying information. Jen, okay. Hadow, do you want to add to that at all? She got on mute first. Mute. Sorry. Okay. Um, no, I think that that captures it. We we had stated in the document that there would be traffic control measures um, as part of the project. It's part of the district standard contractor requirements, and this was just providing additional detail, really based to respond to the requests from the, the neighbors about what those um, what those would really include. And so in this instance, it's not a new significant impact, uh, nor is it um, new mitigation. It's just providing additional information to respond to some of those questions that were, that were asked for to understand, better understand what the plans were for traffic control. Okay, because the initial, initial study had said that traffic, there were no impacts due to traffic and standard traffic control measures would be in place. Um, I raised the issue of the, the narrowness of the roads, the backing up of traffic, perhaps all the, you know, up and down with, once you open up that traffic, vehicles will pass, try and pass through, but be blocked on the other side. Um, and then it was revised to have the open, open closed thing, which was, I don't think it's a standard traffic control, just your typical traffic control measure of opening 10 minutes an hour. It may be or may not be, but it seemed like it was, added in as a response to a, a identify a, a significant impact. But I understand you guys are not gonna revise it. You're gonna move forward with it. Um, personally, I'm not gonna take you to Cordova. Um, the, uh, the, the last piece is, is uh, with the road and uh, when you're doing the trenching, um, I know it's typical for a, in, in county, if you get an encroachment permit from the county, that you don't block off the road before 8.30 to, to allow the morning commute traffic to go through. Um, can we get a commitment from you that you won't block the road off and start the actual trenching until after 8.30 so that the morning traffic can get out? Um, yeah. We usually have a standard on that mat of 9 o'clock um, okay. on all, all of our construction project sites. And uh, on the whole traffic control plan thing, that will, I mean, that was the plan the whole time. We knew it was a very tight roadway there. And we did some pipeline construction out in Long Pico, and we had the same thing that we did on that pipeline. And with it being uh, no notified, posted, and getting the information out there and getting the exact timelines of when it's open, it actually worked out really well because people figured out that, okay, this is my time that I get to go down the hill, or this is my time that I get to come up the hill. And they would show up at that time or just before that time because and keeping it on schedule is the best way to keep it flowing. Yes. So how does that work with um, UPS and, and FedEx? Are they aware of the times when it's going to be open and closed? 
they will be. We will be reaching out to them. We will contact them and we will work with them and we'll find out the mail person's route. And usually the mail person, and I know it's not UPS or FedEx, but we will reach out to them. But the mail person is an easy one because usually they're the same time in the same neighborhood every day. Right. And so we'll make sure that we're ready for them every time. Uh, with UPS and FedEx, we'll reach out to them, see the best way of handling it with them. And we'll work something out. We'll make sure that you all are getting your packages, deliveries are being made, garbages are picked up, mails being delivered. Uh, oh, four different gas companies. companies. Yeah. yeah. And and and, and I, I have to strongly agree with James by having these set times that will make sure the road is open. It really it 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 takes the the stress of people trying to come and go at all times, and it, it limits it. Although we open the road, but people do try to make those times and then there's less traffic when we do the, the construction and, and we get we try to move people through. Okay. Uh, you know, it's important that we get people through. Uh, and there are times, you know, with UPS, with drivers and, and, and so forth, if we can uh, time this so we're not in the Christmas season, then there's not... Uh, temporary drivers and those type of things that, you know, they just want to get in and out and, and toss the package. So we time this during the right time of year when the, the package delivery is not as high as it is in the Christmas season and that we should have a pretty good success rate. Nothing's perfect, but we'll, we will work with these agencies. Okay. And then I just want to go back to the very first, the fence around the tank for Peter's sake, please have a redwood fence on his side. You know, it's 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 what they can see. I mean, if there's a, if, if you know, I'm not sure which house is Peter in that. It's the only one adjacent. If if they can see it, uh, because what we normally do with fencing that gets down to normally we contact neighborhoods and we talk to people as it goes in, and and that fence that you saw is actually a a, a wood fence that we have at another tank site we just built. And that wood fence goes to three sides and the far back side where there's no houses is where the chain link is. So we, we will work. And if it, if it requires a full 360 around the, the tank in Redwood, it's not a large fence. And then we will do that in, in Redwood. Um, it just depends. And, you know, we, we like to go with chain link if it's possible, just because of it's very uh, low in maintenance but we also understand the importance of the visual aesthetics of the home. And that's why we, the home from homes, that's why we did the art, the, uh, the artist rendition to right. show what uh, an actual tank site, that's actually a fence that was lifted uh, and put into that picture from another tank site in Boulder Creek. Well, I know for, for Peter's sake, again, it's the noise that he's most concerned about because he is right yeah. next to it. And I know that, I know that he's very, very concerned um, I'm not sure if he's the gentleman that went out. There's been some folks that went out to another one of our pump stations. Um, and we will work in that pump station that they went to was just your standard concrete building without the noise reduction doors and louver ventings and so forth. Uh, I don't, I doubt if you will hear anything coming from that pump station, but you know, the proof will be when it's constructed. Um, and we are planning to minimize noise. Okay. I, will you. Say, I will say to that too, very small pumps. I will say to that too, is that Peter is also positioned in an area where the tank is going to buffer yeah. where the pump station is. So the tanks between Peter and the pump station. So that's going to help that yeah. area on that end. And, and right now, the, the two pumps, existing pumps and the other tanks are in open enclosures. They just have a red uh, composition roof over them. The sides are open. There's no noise canceling or reduction. Um, uh, and those folks who live right around those pumps, uh, there's nothing there now. And it's going to be, it's just going to be the difference between night and day when that facility is completed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Sorry, I was muted there. Um, it looks like we have a few uh, repeat 
people asking questions. I don't know if we want to skip to someone that hasn't gone. It looks like we have Nick Nakari. Um, I don't think he's spoke yet. And same with Peter is back on. Um, do, Rick, do you have a preference if we go back through or? No, you know, uh, we're, we're moving pretty good through the questions. I really would like to take everybody's questions if possible. Yeah, but I think we should go back to, we should stay with people that haven't spoken and then go back. To the that sounds good. I agree. Okay. Great, so we'll go ahead and uh, get Nick Nakari. Evening, Nick. Can you hear us? Nick, you're on mute. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. You know, I was originally against this tank way before the CZU fire this summer, which we all had to evacuate, and we all were wondering if our homes would even be here when we returned. And so anybody who's against the aesthetics of the tank, I would like to say, consider the aesthetics of your home as a pile of ash, because that is the alternative. Global warming isn't going away. Droughts are going to be getting longer. It's nice to have water during a drought. And anybody who's saying, well, you know, we want this nebulous site further up the road. Uh, they're not considering that you spent two years and tens of thousands of dollars, and this site has come through with flying colors. So my family and I really want to thank the district for bending over backwards to, to bring us as much needed and overdue million dollar improvement to our neighborhood. It's phenomenal. I mean, how could anybody be against this tank unless they were basically really inconsiderate of their neighbors and kind of suicidal about their own home. Now, I, I would say that I own that property and I was against it, uh, but after the CCU fire, I turned totally for it. I wanna to respond to a couple of things. One is that Matt said that he's concerned about the parking there. Everybody knows up scenic way, you park on your own property. He has no right to park on that property now as it's mine. And he doesn't have any right to park on it when it's yours either. And you know, it's for him to say that he expects to be able to park on someone else's property. You know, I don't know if he'd mind if I park on his property, but uh, you know, it's going to be in Adele. He mentioned the, the visuals on the tank and it will be in Adele, which also kind of secludes it and it will be behind a large grove of redwoods. You guys are putting in a fence and trees and bushes. So you've really covered everything as much as humanly possible. Uh, I understand about UPS trucks. We get our deliveries from Amazon too. So, uh, you know, it's great that you're doing all that. You can't fly the materials in by helicopter or drop them by parachute. There's going to have to be some trucks. Same with Highway 9. I mean, nobody's house up here could have even been built without construction trucks coming up. So let's not be so selfish about our own little private parking area and, and consider the community. Also, I would like to say that I have contacted the person at the end of Dundee, and there is an alternative route available from down by Sylvia all the way up to Dundee, and uh, an emergency vehicle can get in during that. Uh, Sandy had mentioned repaving the road, and what I would like to say to her is, I live up here too, and I know what that road's like because I'm the one that's out there now. Her, I guess her previous or her late husband was paving the road a little bit. People up here know that they've seen me out there for 10 years paving the road. And I have never asked the water district to pave our road except for what they dig up. It's not the responsibility, it's the road maintenance department. You can't ask the water district to do something that's not the responsibility at the same time, like asking social services to repave the road. It's just not your business. So I do see a few people up here that are concerned about issues. Of course, we can't move it further up the road. That just doesn't make sense. It's not even possible to get past Mike Alpern's house unless you're really risking it because the road is so bad right there. Uh, Rick, I would like to ask you about uh, a little bit with the construction vehicles. You guys seem like you're doing a whole lot on that and there will be communications between different ends of, of the uh, the safety people out there. But I think that you've done everything humanly possible. Why would somebody be so selfish as to deny this amazing gift to our community? So Rick, could you go over a little bit more of you know uh, what the district is doing in the way of mitigations? 
Uh, I think that Sandy has a right to want the road repaved, but she needs to contact the road maintenance department. You guys are covering up any damage that you do and you're gonna repave the road. And I fought hard to get that in there and you put it in. You guys are doing an excellent job of bringing water safety to our community. I mean, who that's not suicidal in a sense would not want to double, and this tank will double our capacity for water up here. So if you guys could just make a few comments about what I've said, let me know that at least the, the, uh, the audio was on. <laughs> Thanks. And I'd like to get back to you after that. You know, I'm, I'm, I look at it, you know, the district wants to be a good neighbor and wants to work with the neighborhood and projects today, it's important that all steps are taken uh, regarding, you know, repairs to the roadway that the district damages, uh, a good environmental stewardship during construction. You know, we did hire a tree uh, arborist to come in and do evaluations of, of the Grove of Redwoods. Uh, it is very important that the Grove of Redwoods um, are not removed and they will not be removed. I think we're removing one small tree that's being requested, Redwood tree, uh, due to the fact that it's unhealthy. Uh, and the arborist says it needs to come out. Um, otherwise, uh, and we're replanting uh, native uh, for uh, animal uh, animal food. We're definitely uh, have, I think, four to five native types of berries and, and hazelnut to replant. Uh, I think we're putting an owl house in for uh, rodent control uh, on the pump station, but it, you know, I appreciate Nick's support, but it's very important that we get your questions answered, and it's very important to the district that we are good neighbors. Um, can I can I ask a question? All Another question. Questions. Part of that. Uh, there seems to be some concern. Mike had mentioned about the top of the pump station, the roof. I said, well, it's going to be concrete, and he said, yeah, but the roof won't be concrete. Of course, it won't. But is there going to be sound insulation on the roof too? It'll be inside the building, but we are actually looking at, you know, construction materials that come a long ways architectural wise, and we are looking at a solid concrete. Uh, we've changed, we're changing our standards to address fire management of our facilities, and we are looking to put in uh, a complete concrete uh, pump station, a small pump station, very similar to what you see out in state parks. I hate to use this comparison, uh, the restroom facilities that you see in state parks that are solid concrete, um, our standards have changed with the, the fire and we are hardening all of our sites. Uh, so uh, I think you'll see a solid concrete uh, pump station and you'll see uh, sound dooring uh, on the main front door going in and sound uh, venting uh, put in. Another part of my question, Rick, if I may, uh, on Dundee Avenue, we've got a narrow road there and sometimes people park on Dundee in a little spot that's by the property and it, it sticks out in the road. So Chuck had asked earlier about that because that is a concern for people that have to drive down Dundee. So we lost you, Nick. Right. So do we want to, when, while we're waiting for Nick to come back, do we want to move to, uh, Someone else who hasn't spoke, Carly? Sure. So we have Peter Parker again. Um, I just talked to Noel and he said that looks like Peter's mic is outdated for Zoom. Um, so Peter, if you can call in on the phone, I believe that was sent in the chat to you directly. Or you can also put your question into the chat and I'll, I can read it out um, if you want to do it that way. Are we, sure, are we sure that he's not one of those numbers that has called in? I'm not sure. Um, maybe... I don't think we have anything in the chat. Let's know. let's try to bring Peter back on and see if we can hear him this time. Peter, can you hear us? Nope. He might be one of those numbers. There's Peter. Can Peter. You also, if you have a camera, Peter, you can put your phone number up there if that is one of your phone numbers. I mean, because we can't communicate with you. Okay. Okay, well, oh, let's see. Is that the one right there? 
Day three one on the top now. Yeah, we have a number, Peter, the last four digits, seven, four, four, six, that's muted. If that's you, uh, just go ahead and speak up. You're permitted, but you're muted right now. I actually believe um, Peter's number ends in the 4275 from calls I've had. There's Peter's number right now, 4275. Now, how do we unmute him, though? I think he has to unmute him. How do you unmute phones? What's the key stroke? Anybody know? CTV, do you know how to unmute the phone? Okay, well, we can come back and try again here, but we can, uh, let's go ahead and move on. Um, so I see Mark Randalls is next. Oh, wait, we got a phone. Hello? Hey, oh, this is Peter Parker, go. if you can hear me. Yep. We can hear you. Hello? Yes, we can hear. Oh, great. <laughs> Boy, that was quite an adventure getting through. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <I was> just <laughs> so thank you. Okay, it's my turn to talk. Yes, go Can ahead. you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so concerning the, the, the pump noise, uh, I, I went up to uh, the station on uh, Blackstone Terrace uh, for a couple of days and uh, waited for the pump to come down. It never did. And I, I called Carly today and uh, James was able to turn the pump on remotely while I was sitting right next to it. So that was great. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, Making the effort to uh, make that happen. So here's my here's my experience with the the pump station. Uh, so it's not soundproof, definitely. Uh, it has a a metal door that's vented, and what I noticed was that I could hear the the noise from about a hundred feet away um, on the side where the door was. But everywhere else, if I got about thirty or forty feet away. It, you could hardly hear it at all. So I think it's going to make a big difference um, how that pump station is oriented, or as I think Rick was saying, um, you're looking at a at a new design that's that would be completely concrete, including the roof, and that might actually be um, truly soundproof. So. This one was not quiet. I was a little disappointed that it was as loud as it was. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be better than having an open pump, but my uh, property in my dwelling is very close to this unit. Um, so that is a concern for me. And I also, so yeah. So let me also just back up a little bit here. Uh, at the last meeting we had in person last year toward the beginning of this year, um, we had asked for the location of the tank to be marked on site so that we could actually see where it is. And when I look at the plot plan, it looks like it, it looks like the retaining wall cuts right up, uh, on the slope, uh, to my property and that the tank is possibly only three feet away from my property. Um, although I had been told before that it was going to be located down in the Dell. So if there's some confusion about that. I would really like to see uh, some sort of marker go up. Uh, we did ask for that at the last meeting that we had in person and um, the, your staff agreed to uh, put up some uh, story poles or some type of staking where we could actually see where, where it would be. So Based on the fact that I was there today and listened to a pump station that supposedly is um, the same that is being or was being planned for this site and has a, a similar pump, I think it's a, a 3.5 horse um, unit. The proximity to my property uh, is, is definitely something that I'm gonna be um, noticing and having to deal with. So. Um, I would really like to see some kind of story pull uh, go up so that we can um, locate that. Uh, the rendering that was shown 
and I know that that's just a photograph of another tank that was superimposed on the site. And it also, the comment was that there was no grading, but it looks like uh, quite a bit of excavation. It looks like that retaining wall based on the topography lines is about um, maybe six to eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. So um, again, I'm just a little um, concerned about the proximity to my place. And um, so I'd just like to request that you do mark that uh, definitely so that uh, we can tell where it is. And if you're anticipating a, a better design that's even more soundproof, that would be uh, that would be great to hear. I think that's all I have. Everybody else is dealing with traffic considerations, and I just wanted to report in on um, on the location um, being marked and also the my experience with the pump noise today. So thank you. Uh, Peter, thank you, and thank you for being persistent to, to call in tonight. Um, yeah, that pump station, I, I don't believe, has any soundproofing whatsoever. You know, it has straight louvers on the doors and eaves. Uh, it has a composition roof. Uh, you know, it is a block building, but it the sound does come right through the door, most likely. Uh, we have not received any complaints uh, in the neighborhood from that pump station and then there again the, it, the last pump station that replaced was just the pump laying on the ground that was not in a enclosure so it is a lot better than it, it has been but it'll be a completely different design there will be you know soundproofing of that and we can mark out I'm I don't believe the retail I will double check take a look at uh, plans I don't believe that retaining wall is six to eight feet tall uh, I think it's like two to three feet tall, uh, but I will, we can double check that. I'm not, you know, uh, I don't have that in front of me and we can do uh, some markouts. I will have, we will have to re get permission to enter property again by the owner, but that'll be no problem uh, to go on property. Um, and we can do that. Well, that sounds great. Um, would there be a way to notify us? Yes. Uh, once the, the uh, tank location has been marked. Definitely. You know, we probably would like okay. to mark scenes that, you know, you, you your property abuts up to our property or our potential property. Um, are, are you, I, I can't picture which house is yours of its, uh, will, will be behind the tank because most likely the tank will be in between your property and the pump station. Um, and that will. So this house is the one with the wire fence on the back side of the site. It goes from Country Club down to Dundee. Yeah, then there should be, yeah, this tank should be in between uh, the pump station and his house. Am I correct, James? Yes. Yeah. Actually, actually, it's not. No? Um, as, as I'm looking at the plot plan, the pump station is located to the east side of the tank, and I'm on the north side of the tank. So if you wanted to put the tank between my house and the and the uh, pump station, you'd have to put the pump station on the south edge of the uh, tank rather than the eastern edge. We will definitely look at that. Okay. Yeah. And um, you know, my my house is is located on the. Uh, is not on that side of the property, but that whole property is uh, actually, you know, being used. We spent a lot of time outdoors. There's a patio right there above the uh, above the proposed tank location. Um, right. So I, I am concerned about impacts, and um, I'll feel a little better once I once I see where the exact location of the tank is, and also. Uh, Possibly you could uh, mark the uh, pump station as well. In the, are you still with me? Yes, yes, yes. I'm just gonna make. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Um, also, during that last in-person meeting that we had, um, when we were asking about having the location of the tank staked out. So somebody on the staff commented that, well, we're, we're, we haven't decided exactly where that's going to go yet. Um, and maybe that was the reason that it was never staked out. 
But every time I've seen this plan, it hasn't changed and it shows the tank and the pump house in the same location. So I don't know if it was, um, if there was ever a point after we started discussing this in meetings where the location uh, was flexible, but um, I'd, uh, I'd like for somebody to address that as well. You can. Yeah, the tank, the tank has moved, but I mean, when he, when our engineering manager made that comment, is we were not done positioning it exactly the way. It has moved, but there's not enough room on that site to move the tank more than three, four, five feet in either direction. So, a little bit of movement on the site plan, you don't really see it. But it was it was adjusted a little bit, but. Other than that, it, it wasn't much off of where it was going to be to begin with. And and once you know, we, if it was, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I'm sorry. I was just going to uh, clarify. Do you know if that uh, if it was moved to the north toward my property? It was actually yes. It was actually pushed back to the north, two feet from the original site plan. Okay. And yeah, it just was, looks awful that, close. And, and that was due to the root structure of the Redwood Grove that is um, that we are having to maintain and save. And we had to push it back to get the distance of, that the arborist had put in there without damaging the roots of those, those redwoods. Okay, well, let's get that marked so that we can actually uh, see on the ground uh, where it's gonna be um and then i you know we can continue this discussion right now it's uh it's really just hard to pinpoint understand that makes sense right and, and like like james said there's not a lot of room to to move things around but we are very concerned uh, on the tree root structure and things may even change a little bit you know as we rub the property and do some uh, test excavation for the foundation. We want to be sure we don't get into a, uh, a massive amount of, of large roots to, the, to that grove of redwoods. Yeah, I understand. Um, and so given the location of the pump station, uh, you know, that's going to be um, uh, probably even more important. Um, in terms of uh, you know the transmission of noise, not just to my property, but over to the houses on Dundee, mm -hmm. uh, which are pretty close to that as well. But you know, uh, we just need more information. If you're going to use a completely different uh, design that's soundproof, then that'll that question will be academic. Um, in terms of the, um, you know the proximity of the tank to my property I'm not so concerned about the uh, about the appearance I think from what I can tell it's located uh, several feet below my property right but it also looks like it also looks like that retaining wall cuts into the slope uh, and I'm just a little concerned about destabilizing anything up above it so uh, without more information as to exactly where the tank is located or within two or three feet, uh, I don't really know where to go with this. Um, so hopefully that's something that you guys can take care of uh, soon. Correct. Okay. Well, that sounds good. I really, I really appreciate you guys taking this into consideration and helping me with the, uh, with the pump station today. Sorry, you had to stay up there and wait because <laughs> hey, we can't. Oh, no. We can't turn those on and off. No. I, <laughs> I know James was able to find a button somewhere that he pushed and he turned it on, but no, I was. I took my work up there and I was working for a couple hours, so it wasn't wasted time. But it was wonderful to hear the pump come on and oh, okay, now I can hear what it is. Yeah, Peter, I wish it hadn't. And yeah. you'll see a big difference in the sound deafening louvers, vented louvers yeah. that go into these buildings. Uh, we did a pump station out on Zioni Drive Road, and that got all sound deafening louvers venting in that building. And you could, and those are large pumps, and you can barely hear them outside the building. 
Yeah, the, the doors to uh -huh. that facing are concrete. They're they're metal on the outside, but they're solid concrete with uh, their their ball bearing hinge. You you can open and close them like a a vault door at a bank, but boy, they're heavy. <laughs> well, John, it, it, if they're quiet, that's the main thing. Um, that's our plan. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate the consideration. Thank you, Peter. And I'll, yeah, you bet. Thank you, guys. That's enough for me. Thank you, Peter. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move to Mark Randalls, who's next in the queue. Yeah, um, so I just had a question about the bidding process. Um, start spring 2021, it's pretty close uh, as far as projects like this go. Um, I was wondering when the plan was for this to go out to bid, um, how long that would take and those kind of things. Once we get the design, um, I was talking with one of the consulting engineers of ours recently about this. And they figured for design on that is going to take two and a half to three months. So that puts us into the end of February, uh, middle of March. And the bid time on this, though, is not going to be very long. We'll probably put it out to bid for three to four weeks. Okay. And that usually is enough time on a site this size and a construction project of this, of this magnitude to complete and get good bids at that point. At okay. the, that timeline. And then right then we move into construction. So we hope to go into construction by the end of April, beginning of May. Okay. Um, and you guys have settled all the property details. It's just executing the contract or? No, right. we, the, the property purchase is contingent on going through the, the CEQA okay. uh, process. Very close. Okay. Um, I, I listened into a director's meeting several months ago, and I know that's one of the topics. So. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mark. All right. We'll go ahead and move back to Julie Carlson. Hi, it's me and my neighbor, Chuck. Chuck has uh, a couple more things to ask, please. Just a real quick one. You're talking about doing planting on the site and stuff. Is there going to be irrigation on that? Because as everybody knows, it gets pretty hot up in the neighborhood. And if you're going to plant a bunch of plants with no water, they're going to die. Right. Well, that's one thing we have is water. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, and not to be, not to try to be funny or anything, but I do believe irrigation is planned for the, until we get these plants started, maybe the first two years. And I think it's in, one of the documents of, of how we plan to vegetate and irrigation. Um, but the plants that will be selected are native plants. So once established, they should not need irrigation. Okay. And one last thing on the parking thing, Dundee Avenue is a private road and we have had some issues with people parking too close to Dundee and right. it makes it hard to get down the road. There's a neighbor across the way that has a water meter right in the road. And if you go off the road, you're gonna run over their water meter. So you guys should be aware of the parking and kind of limited to the side on, you know, country club, not so much Dundee, if it's well, possible. I got a question on that. I mean, that's come up a few times and we'd like to work with you people of Dundee and figure out if we need to mitigate to where you can't park there or if you would want it to be widened so there is parking there. I mean, we'd want to work with you on that. I would say no parking there because people, everybody who lives up in the mountains, you park on your own property. You guys yeah. shouldn't have to fly people parking for people. Bottom line, they knew that when they moved up here. Right, and so with that, I mean, we could mitigate it to where we go in there at the end of the construction and plant in there, put railroad ties in there, and plant in there as well to where it narrows that down to where it's not, you know, inviting to people to park there. Yeah, we'd appreciate that. And also, I'd love one last thing to applaud the lady with the resurfacing of the roads around <laughs> yeah. there. Um, as far as a one-year project, that's going to be quite a disruption on everybody's lives up there for the year. So whatever you could do on the paving thing would be really appreciated. So enough said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
So looks like we have David Lohr next. Here I am. Um, will you mute? Oh, go ahead, Jim. Can hear you. you mute? We can hear you. We have two computers in the same room, which creates an echo. Um, Rick, I just wanted to inform you. Will you turn your sound off? Yeah. <laughs> Rick, I just want to inform you that yes, we live right above the pump station um, and two of your men came and put insulation because not us, but some other people that didn't, that must have that been louder for, uh, complained and you guys responded and put some insul some sort of sound insulation in a little pump shack there next to the wooden tanks about right. two years ago. Right. Um, that was one thing I noticed that you didn't understand that that actually did happen. And, I, and it's to your credit. Well, I, I understand um, that it happened, but the, the, the next thing I got is existing water lines that are poly and above ground. And I'm curious what's going to be the de the uh, disposition of the poly line that runs right below our house from the tanks up to Dundee. All of those lines. Um, it's it's above ground and David. I saw a lot of um, water lines melted in the fire. <laughs> so David, with this project, those lines- will uh, I get, I get. Can you hear me? Uh, now I can, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, with the project- Here we go. With the project, uh, with the removal of the water tanks and the pump station there below your house, all of the piping, above ground piping also gets removed. Because we will now be tied in in the street at the intersection of Country Club and Jackson to the new pump station on the new site. So all the poly lines on that side hill all come out as well. Oh. That, that That's good to know. You need to mute again. Um, the other question I is I have is uh, my understanding. I've watched your your talented uh, technicians repair every welded joint around our house over the last couple of years. So poly, you know, I run a water company uh, up up in the Sierras. We don't have poly. We have asbestos cement, which is uh, not as resilient. Let me say, but. Uh, they use the same type of couplers and repair clamps to do that. And what is going on is we're trying to get a whole neighborhood pitch in to repave our road. But every time you guys come out and put one of those repairs in, because it's really hard for them to fix because they also put uh, a 12-inch slurry in around the pipe. So they got a jackhammer, every leak. Um, before they can put a wraparound compression fitting on it. But um, I'm, I'm kind of up against the same thing up in Laporte is that we don't want to repave the roads until the water lines are pretty secure or replaced. Um, so I, I'd like to be able to work with you guys on, I mean, I think the poly line itself is just fine. It's just the um, welds that they used are starting to fail. And, or and that may be because the hill's moving slightly, whatever for whatever reason. So I want to know if you guys have any plans. And this is a little bit out of the scope of the tank, but for the water lines near the tank, um, uh, one like the one that blew the other day, you know, thousands of gallons of water went down the hill right behind us, which we have put. Um, some hay over to kind of keep the erosion from happening. But your, your guys are, you know, stressed out. They're running around aging water system. I mean, mine's 60 years old, so it's got problems all the time. I have to, I'm the one that answers the call and fixes the, the problem. So I understand. But um, like when they patch the road, usually within a few months, there's a four inch hole there because it's not compacted. And I'm just a little, little, want to work with you guys on, um, since this is not a, opposed to what Nick said earlier, call the road department, we have all paid to pay this road. It's a private system. And we're all looking at paying again to have it repaved. And I'm just concerned about doing that before we have an intact water system. 
Yeah, and unfortunately, um, I do know how bad that system is. And I was in those holes myself 14, 13, 14 years ago. Um, I repaired many a leaks in that neighborhood. There seemed to have been a batch of pipe in the 90s that came out. We have two neighborhoods that that pipe went into, and we're having the same issue in both neighborhoods. And it's not only gone to the point where it's not just the wells, we're actually getting pinholes in HDPV pipe and nobody, yeah. and nobody is like, nobody's seen that. And it's a new thing. And then we started talking with pg and and they're starting to get it in their poly lines. And so we don't have a plan at this time to do a pipe system, pipe, new pipe in that area. We are working on our water master plan and then that'll do a heat map of where leaks are and where we've had a majority of leaks. And that will be one of the factors that pushes a neighborhood into a mainline replacement. Um, that is in the works and is due to be complete here in January. Um, and we'll see where it lines out, but I completely agree with you. We are up there a lot. We have made a lot of patches up there. We have made a lot of repairs up there, but right now at this time, we do not have a pipe plan for that area. So uh, I should understand that we shouldn't repave our road for the, a few years until you guys decide what to do with that? I, I would go lean towards that, yeah, because if we do end up coming through there and putting a new pipeline in, then we would work with the neighborhood for a resurface of the whole area. Right. But I can't tell you if that's 10 years down the road or five years down the road at this point. Okay, door number three. Has anyone ever considered that there's a whole lot of energy into traffic in these conversations of doing the work like they do on freeways at night? I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot because it would be affected by me, to me more and a few people around me more than anybody, but all the other people would really benefit if it happened between say 10 p.m and 5 a.m. Just a thought. Yeah, in a neighborhood like that, we don't tend to like to do night work because it's in such close proximity to homes. Um, we have done night work on Bear Creek Road and Highway 9, which is, there's noise usually there all night anyway. But in a neighborhood right. like that, there's no noise at night and it'd just be, it's just not good PR. Right. Good, good enough. I just... It, it occurred to me. Um, next question is about the tank itself. And both togethers require either a vinyl liner or a USF coating. Which one is this going to have? It's going to have the NFS 61 coating. NSF, which has to be redone about every 10 to 15 years. Oh, usually they have a 20 year lifespan, 20 to 30 year lifespan. Cool. They have the new, the, the new coatings they have now are really upgraded and a lot more, um, they hold up a lot better. And the last question I have is order of construction. Um, will they be putting the water line in the um, line up Dundee or a uh, country club first or the tank in first? Um, I th I'm, I'm seeing it as the construction at the tank site will begin and as that's going on, they will probably move in and do that pipeline somewhere in the middle there. But I would expect, I personally, I wanna see it to where they open up uh, the site enough to where they can stage and be off the roadway and out of the air, you know, keep everything open and then come in and do the piping. That way they can put their equipment up into the site. Yeah, I would think that the pipeline should be first just because of that, but I'm not an engineer. Yeah, it's just, I mean, we got to be able to get it. We got to be able to put the equipment somewhere. And if we don't go into right. that site and start getting it opened up and put stuff somewhere, that's the only place we really have to put it. Cool. Um, you've answered all my questions. Thanks for the second chance and thanks for what you're doing. Thank you, Thank you David. Thank you. All right. So it looks like I do see Sandy Mast is there, um, but we also have another question from Dusty who hasn't asked a question tonight. So we'll go to Dusty first and then we'll come back to Sandy after.
Dusty, can you hear us? Hello, Dusty? Dusty, you may have the same issue as Peter had. If you have a phone number that you can call in on, we'll watch for a new phone number to pop up. And if it does, we'll stream you in, but we're gonna move on to Sandy. And if Sandy, if you can keep your comments short, it would be great because this is your second time. Sandy, it looks like you're muted. I'm on you. There we go. Dusty lives in my neighborhood, and I was a teacher at San Lorenzo Valley High School and junior high, and I taught his son. So Dusty probably has a few things to say because he's had to do a lot of water mitigation for the road. I don't know why he's not hooked in, but I just want to thank you. All I wanted to sign up for is to say thank you. Your chat function is turned off, which they know because they don't want people like me last time going on three email addresses and harassing them. So I get it. But I just want to say this to you guys. I appreciate all your efforts, and I thought I would close with this. We just want the infrastructure repaired, and you guys are about that. And this is the most traction I've ever seen since I moved here in 1985, which before some of you were born, um, to say that you are the best water company ever. And I should close the meeting with this because I think we're amazing. And I appreciate, I know you're trying to clean up on aisle nine, as I like to call it. And there's a lot on aisle nine. It's a pain in the ass, pardon my French. And uh, I just want to say thank you. That's all I wanted to do. That's why I put my hand up to say thank you, because I recognize how hard it is. I, I ran 24 schools throughout the county with all the kids, and I get what a little bit of what you're dealing with. And you're doing an infrastructure that's really hard. And all I want to say is thank you very much for all you're doing. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Dusty Hookie, are you still out there? You, uh, you want to try to uh, get your comments in? There's definitely no new phone, or phone number that popped oh. up, but let's see if we can get them again. Go ahead and unmute, Dusty. Let's see if we can get Dusty Hookie on the... Dusty, you're there, but we're not hearing you. Did a new phone number just pop in? There's four now. There was only three. I would call it if I knew which one. Can we open the chat so Dusty can tell us which one? Oh, that number just went away again. Dusty, if that's you, uh, oh, you're opening them all up. I see what you're doing. If any of those are your numbers, you just got to unmute them or call in with your number. This is not Dusty. This is Mardine. Um, but I do have a question. I uh, looked at the diagram and... Uh, I see that there's going to be a retaining wall. Um, it looks like it's going to be right about in the area where our trash uh, cans are currently being placed. Um, and I want to know what's going to happen with <laughs> our trash collection. How is that going to, where is that going to move to? No, the, we don't have any construction planned up there where the trash cans are. Um, the retaining wall is actually on the opposite side of the redwood trees from where the trash cans are, and it runs along the okay. country club between Peter Parker's house and the redwood grove. Um, well, the 
The driveway is going to come from the intersection of Country Club and Dundee. So that it looks like it's going to go through where the cars are currently parking. And then the Redwood Grove, oh, I see the Redwood Grove. It looks like you've got the tree bases indicated there. It's a little hard to, to decipher the diagram. Um, okay, so the scale is, is difficult to, to understand. But you're saying that that, that retaining wall is going to be on the other side of the Redwood Grove from Country Club, from the intersection. Correct. Okay. So it's not going to affect our trash collection area at all? No, we have no plans to do any construction in the trash collection area. Um, the, drive okay. the driveway may take up one of the parking spots there, but the driveway isn't set to be more than 12 feet wide at this point per plans. Um, so it's not going to be that invasive, but it will be a little invasive. Okay. All right. That was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Justin, you. are you still there? Have you tried to chat or tried to talk to us? Oh, we got a new phone number. I think it's the 5172 is the new phone number. Uh, but Dusty, you're muted. Phone's muted as well. Uh, one of the phones are muted, yes. Now the phone's unmuted. There you go. There you go. Okay, can you hear me now? Now we can hear, we can hear you. Unbelievable. <laughs> I love technology. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, a couple, just a couple of things. Um, I'm kind of the new guy in the neighborhood here. Uh, my wife and I moved here uh, February 1st, 1972. And um, I think that the first thing that I see is that none of you guys that are on this meeting live up here. So you're not going to be experiencing what, what we're experiencing. And then um, I've heard a lot of really great uh, things about all of the um, work that's going to be done to minimize the impact on all of the neighbors up here. But we all know that things happen. You know, um, a foreman gets, you know, he's moved the plates on and off uh, a half a dozen times in the last 30 minutes, and he's going to be a little pissed off. So, you know, I want to know, who do we call? If, if things aren't going as perfectly as planned, um, who do we call? I mean, uh, of, of you five lovely people, who's there that we can talk to? We will send a letter out, Dusty. This is Rick. Um, me and you worked together many, many years ago. Yep, yep, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, we have worked together on your projects. We will send a letter out before construction starts with all the different information, with an email tree so we can communicate with you, asking for emails. And most likely it'll be James, our director of operation, will be assigned uh, your point of contact with, uh, with direct phone numbers. And we'll also have a, a construction manager, but and he will take his direction from James or an engineering manager. Um, and we will have people, and obviously you could always pick up the phone and call me. Right. Very good. We'll have people assigned to this project. Great. That's that's um, that's good news. Um, uh, and and <laughs> going back to Sandy Matt's point, way back in the history of time. Um, um, Rick and I uh, negotiated. We were in the process of paving um, uh, this section of Country Club, and because his water um, trucks were, were or maintenance trucks were up and down a road pr practically more than than some of the residents, um, those guys agreed to chip in um, a little bit of money on the road maintenance, um, which was hugely appreciated. And so this is, you know, uh, sort of a, a shared um, responsibility in all of this, uh, probably as Sandy indicated, would go a huge way because uh, clearly we're all going to be uh, very much impacted by this, Peter in particular. And um, uh, as far as goodwill and all of that goes, uh, it would be probably a worthwhile thing to uh, discuss, not in this particular meeting, but, but down the road. When, when we did that project, as you remember, Dusty, all of our pipelines were inch and a half and two inch above ground. 
and they were constantly breaking and we were constantly up there. The road was dirt. Uh, the road finally washed down to where the, all the piping was exposed and we went in there. Right. Right. Uh, and we did, I mean, the dust that used to go onto your house was incredible. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we went in there and put all new larger main in, and then we did a, an overlay, a complete overlay, and it's changed that, that whole road and neighborhood. A long time ago. Right. A long right. Time. What else has changed is that we're in there fixing those, that same pipe all the time. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate some of that pipe, there's been an issue with it. Um, but, you know, I am concerned about what Matt Johnson brought up, and uh, someone sent us a picture I do believe of that section of road that shows the alligatoring and there may be an issue with our pipe there. And, you know, that, that's a no brainer for us to check out and, uh, right. Look at that, um, further down the road, you know, cause we are going to do an overlay of the section of where our tanks are now up to the new tank site, uh, where we put in uh, a new pipe and there's no doubt that an overlay leaves the neighborhood, you know, uh, and it's something we can talk about, you know, and obviously I don't want to cry the blues, but the district does not have a lot of money. And with this fire, we have been really, you, you have a hundred percent of ours. <laughs> yeah, there's any years yet, but we, you know, we can always talk. Okay, good. Good. Um, and, and one last, one last uh, quick thing. And this regards our, our good friend and, and very responsible and great neighbor, Peter. Um, I think you, we, we should all uh, agree to let him decide what decibel level is appropriate and acceptable to him. And then after this thing is all built and completed, um, you know, whether it's 40 decibels or 35 or a jet engine, <laughs> you know, it's, it's got to be him that has to, to decide what is, what is appropriate and then it should be agreed that whatever mitigating issues have to be employed to get that decibel level to what is acceptable to him and to the immediate neighbors um, that he also has, um, I think that should also be um, considered. You know, I, I totally agree with you. One person's noise, you know, what they hear in another person. I have other, other projects, Dusty, where things were out of my control. I couldn't do anything about a transformer. Well, we worked on the pump station, but the PG&E transformer, I couldn't even hear it standing at the base of the <laughs> pole. Right. But the lady who lived adjacent to that, she heard it. And, you know, there was a lot of issues back and forth. And then and, and finally, you know, we couldn't do anything. PG&E wouldn't do anything with the transformer. They said it was in their within their tolerances. They came out. But we can work on our pump station, and I'm confident, and I don't have any issue working uh, with uh, with Peter on the pump station itself because I know those pumps are very small, and I know we can mitigate the noise there. But I'm I'm hesitant to say I'll do whatever I have to do just in case some things are out of the control of the district. But I will work right. with okay. on the pump station. And I do want to iterate to that as well. Is I mean the pumps run three hours or less per day. Yeah. And so, and you know, and, and I understand that a decibel to one person, you may not even hear and then to other people, um, you know, we've had, I've had people 10 miles away from a, a pump station that track the noise back to that pump station. That they, they oh, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I'm rather sure, certain that when I'm making margaritas with my blender, I'm, I'm probably pissing off some neighbors. So well, um, I get it. See how that sounds. <laughs> no, but we'll do what we can to to work with Peter. Obviously, you know he's impacted. Probably, um, he's right there, um, and he has you know concerns about retaining walls and so forth. And you know we'll we'll we can meet those concerns. Good. All right. Well, thanks everyone for the time. Appreciate it. Good talking to you again. Likewise. Thank you. Okay, so it does look like we have David Lohr again. Um, we'll take David's question and then we might want to think about closing out the meeting. <laughs> so. And David, if you could make it short, we'd appreciate it. This is your third or fourth time. Uh, eyes are getting heavy. <laughs> you David, you're muted, David. Oh, 
David. David, you're still muted if you're you're speaking. I'm trying to hi. There we it, go. It's it's me, Sandy Mass. We're partners, David, Laura, and I. So that's why we're tag teaming you. So so the point is, is Dusty, I raised his kid in high school and junior high. And we're a, a tight community and we just love you guys, but we really need you to like hear us. Hear us about um the fact that the infrastructure, like my late husband, Jeff, repaved the road. I know I'm repeating myself, but I think they want to, they need to hear it, that we repaved the road with the neighbors and I'm going around getting them to contribute to repaving the road. But until the infrastructure of the water system is tight, they're questioning me. So if I can say to them, you guys are tight, then I can get them to get on board with that piece, even though I wanted you to do it yourselves. Yeah. So my point is, is I think it would be really great if you guys could like, now you'll show a presence up here because you're gonna make the whole water tank thing happen, which I'm grateful for. But I also think you have to like, think about your political capital. You have to think about your political capital and Dusty was part of that. We're all a part of that. And my honey is like telling me shut up. But the point is, is that you have to really like think about this is our community. I've been here since 85. I love you guys. I love the place. And I want you to like be part of us. And I, I'm the first person to call on the emergency line when something happens. So I just want to say how much I appreciate you, but I also want you to like take care of us. Take care of us. We count on you. And I paid $476 on my water bill last month. Which so, was $76 more than I charge per year for 44 lots up in the Sierras. So I'm <laughs> just saying. We're going to wrap this meeting up and let our consultants. Oh, and good night, sweet people. Craig and Sandy. And obviously, we will talk again. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Great, everybody. I, we, I, we hope that you feel that you got. You may not like some of the answers, but hopefully, you feel that you got your questions answered. And again, contact staff at any time. You know, if you didn't get your questions answered, or you thought about one more thing, or whatever, please don't hesitate to contact uh, staff. Jennifer and Amanda, thank you both for sitting yes. with us and being here for us. Thank you. TTV, thank you for hosting us. Carly, all have All right. a great night. Thank you, guys. Bye.